In chapter 4, we will begin to learn about atom. And we also will begin to explore the periodic table. About 3,000 years ago, an argument arose among the philosophers of the time. And the argument was centered on matter. If, for example, you have a pure piece of matter, for example, pure gold, and you divide the pure gold into two, and you pick one half of it, and you divide that one half into two, and you continue to pick the smaller half, and you continue to divide and divide. The question at the time was that, will there be an end to the divisibility of matter? Will it reach a point at which a piece of matter would no longer be able to be divided, that you will reach the last bit of the piece of matter? Two schools of thought arose from the argument. There was a school of thought led by these very wise philosophers, Plato and Aristotle. The contention of Plato and Aristotle is that there will be no end to the divisibility of matter. No end to divisibility of matter. There was another school of thought led by a little known philosopher. His name was Democritus. Democritus believed that they will reach a point at which a piece of matter could no longer be divided. In Greek word, that is called atomos. Atomos means indivisible. So, Democritus was of the opinion that atoms exist. But because Democritus was not as popular and as well respected as Plato and Aristotle, his idea was not accepted. About 2,000 years later, an English chemist named John Dalton revived the idea that atoms exist. He was able to use experimental facts to convince everybody that atoms exist. How did he do it? There were three natural laws that nobody in the early 1800s could really explain. The three natural laws are the law of conservation of mass, the law of multiple proportion, and the law of constant composition. John Dalton was able to use experiments to explain each of these three laws. And because his experiments and his explanations were convincing 
they left no room for doubt. Everybody in the 1800s, the mid 1800s, believed that atoms exist. And John Dalton, riding on his high of success, postulated some theories. We call these theories now the Dalton's atomic theory. So the atomic theories, according to John Dalton, the very first theory is that each element is composed of tiny, indestructible, indivisible particles called atoms. Well, these days, we now know that atoms can be divided. You can divide atom to generate energy. That is essentially how nuclear reactions work. The second Dalton's atomic theory is that he said all atoms of a given element will have the same mass and all the other properties will be the same for them. And that is how you will be able to distinguish them from the atoms of other elements. This theory was the biggest mistake made by John Dalton because we now know that atoms of the same element can have different masses. According to John Dalton, if they are atoms of the same element, they should have the same mass. But we now know for sure that isotopes exist. We will learn about isotopes in this chapter. The third theory that John Dalton postulated was that when atoms combine, they do so in simple all number ratios to form compounds. This is what he is trying to say. If, for example, you combine nitrogen with oxygen, you can get multiple compounds. You can get N2O, you can get NO2, you can get N2O4, but the combination will be simple all number ratios. You will never get something like N0.3 O0.7. You will never get a fractional combination. It will be simple all number ratios. So this would not exist. And this theory is very sound. Up till now, that is still what we observe in the lab. His atomic theory may be a little shaky right now, but we now know for sure that atoms exist. We have undoubtable evidence that atoms exist. And Although we cannot observe atoms directly when we look at them under the microscope. The microscope cannot deal with atoms because microscope is at 10 to negative 6 magnification. Micros. Micro means 10 to negative 6. Remember, atoms are on the order of nano scale. That is why microscopes cannot be used to observe them directly. But although we cannot observe them directly, we can take their images. And we can even arrange them. Let me show you a very short movie of atoms 
This is called the world's smallest movie because atoms are manipulated to make this movie. That bouncing sphere is an atom and it is being made to move by scanning tunneling microscopy. That is a technique that is used to image atoms. Scanning tunneling microscopy. Let me allow you to enjoy your movie. You get the idea. The boy is made out of atoms, manipulation of atoms. So we have indubitable evidence that atoms exist.